Hello, this is Louise Hay, and I am delighted to share my ideas on affirmations with you. Do listen to the CD for at least 30 days. If you drive a car, it is a perfect companion on the road. Let these ideas permeate your consciousness until they become a part of you. I dedicate this CD to my ever-growing audience. It is my desire that each and every person learn how to use affirmations to create love, peace, joy, prosperity, and a sense of well-being for themselves. Today is a new day. Today is a day for you to begin creating a joyous, fulfilling life. Today is the day to begin to release all your limitations. Today is the day for you to learn the secrets of life. You can change your life for the better. You already have the tools within you to do this. These tools are your thoughts and your beliefs. I will teach you how to use these tools to improve the quality of your life. For those of you who are not familiar with the benefits of positive affirmations, I would like to explain a little about them. An affirmation is really anything you say or think. A lot of what we normally say and think is quite negative and does not create good experiences for us. We have to retrain our thinking and speaking into positive patterns if we want to change our lives. An affirmation opens the way. It is a beginning point of change. In essence, you are saying to your subconscious mind, I am taking responsibility. I am aware that there is something I can do to change. When I talk about doing affirmations, I mean to consciously choose words that will either help to eliminate something from your life or help to create something new in your life. Every thought you think and every word you speak is an affirmation. All our self-talk is a stream of affirmations. You are using affirmations every moment, whether you know it or not. You are affirming and creating your life experiences with every word and every thought. Your beliefs are merely habitual thinking patterns that you learned as a child. Many of them work very well for you. Other beliefs may be limiting your ability to create the very things you may say you want. What you want and what you believe you deserve may be very different. You need to pay attention to your thoughts so you can begin to eliminate the ones that are creating experiences that you do not want in your life. Please realize that every complaint is an affirmation of something you think you don't want in your life. Every time you get angry, you are affirming that you want more anger in your life. Every time you feel like a victim, you are affirming that you want to continue to feel like a victim. If you feel that life does not give you what you want in your world, then it is certain you will never have the goodies that life gives to others until you change the way you think and talk. You are not a bad person for thinking the way you do. You have just never learned how to think and talk. The world is just now beginning to learn that our thoughts create our experiences. Your parents probably didn't know this, so they could not possibly teach it to you. They taught you how to look at life in the way that their parents taught them. So nobody is wrong. However, it is time for all of us to wake up and to begin to consciously create our lives in a way that pleases and supports us. You can do it. I can do it. We can all do it. You just need to learn how. So let's get to it. I will talk about affirmations in general, and then I will get to specific areas of life and show you how to make positive changes in your health or your finances or your love life, etc. Once you learn how to use affirmations, then you can apply the principles in all situations. Some people say that affirmations don't work, which is an affirmation in itself. 
when what they mean is they don't know how to use them correctly. They may say, my prosperity is growing, and think, oh, this is stupid, I know it won't work. Which affirmation will win out? The negative one, because it is part of a long-standing, habitual way of looking at life. Sometimes people will say their affirmations once a day and then complain the rest of the time. It will take a long time for affirmations to work if it is done this way. The complaining affirmations will always win because there are more of them and they are usually said with great feeling. Saying our affirmations is only part of the procedure. What we do for the rest of the day and night is even more important. The secrets to having your affirmations work quickly and consistently is to prepare the atmosphere for them to grow in. Affirmations are like seeds planted in soil. Poor soil, poor growth. Rich soil, abundant growth. The more you can choose to think thoughts that make you feel good, the quicker the affirmations work. Think happy thoughts. It's that simple. And it is doable. The way you choose to think right now is just that, a choice. You may not realize it because you have thought this way for so long, but it really is a choice. Now, today, this moment, you can choose to change your thinking. It won't turn around overnight, but if you are consistent and daily make the choice to think thoughts that make you feel good, you will definitely make positive changes in every area of your life. I learned this secret from Abraham. If you haven't experienced the teacher Abraham, call 830-755-2299 or log on to the website www.abraham-hicks.com for information. I consider Abraham to be one of the best teachers on the planet today. I awaken each morning with blessings and gratitude for the wonderful life I lead, and I make the choice to think happy thoughts no matter what others are doing. No, I don't do it 100% of the time, but I am up to about 75-80% now, and it's made a big difference in how much I enjoy life and how much good just seems to flow into my everyday world. The only moment you ever live is this moment. This moment is the only time you have any control over. If we won't choose to feel good in this moment, then how can we create future moments that are abundant and fun? How do you feel right now? Do you feel good? Do you feel bad? What are your current emotions? What is your gut feeling? Would you like to feel better? Then reach for a better feeling thought. If you feel bad in any way, sad, grumpy, bitter, resentful, angry, fearful, guilty, depressed, jealous, critical, etc., then you have temporarily lost your connection to the flow of good experiences that the universe has waiting for you. Don't waste your thoughts on blame. No person, place, or thing has any control over your feelings because they do not think in your mind. It is also why you really have no control over others, because you cannot control their thoughts. No one can control another unless that person gives permission. So you want to be aware of this powerful mind you have. You can take total control over your own thinking. It is the only thing you will ever have total control of. What you choose to think is what you will get in life. I have decided to choose to think thoughts of joy and appreciation, and you can too. What kind of thoughts make you feel good? Thoughts of love, appreciation, gratitude, remembering joyful experiences, thinking of good things you would like to have happen in the future, rejoicing that you are alive, blessing your body with love, and enjoying this moment, and looking forward to tomorrow. Thinking these kinds of thoughts is an act of loving yourself, and loving yourself creates miracles in your life. 
Now let's get to the affirmations. Doing affirmations is consciously choosing to think certain thoughts that will create positive results in the future. It is a focal point to begin changing your thinking. Affirmative statements are going beyond the reality of the present into the creation of the future by the words you use in the now. When you choose to say, I am very prosperous, you may have very little money in the bank at the moment. What you are doing is planting seeds for future prosperity. Each time you repeat it, you are affirming the seeds you have planted in the atmosphere of your mind. That is why you want it to be a happy atmosphere. Things grow much quicker in fertile, rich soil. It is important for you to always say your affirmations in present tense. I have or I am. If you say I am going to or I will have, then it stays out there in the future. The universe takes your thoughts and words very literally and gives you what you say you want. Always. This is another reason to keep a happy mental atmosphere. It is easier to think in positive affirmations when you feel good. Think of it this way. Every thought you think counts, so don't waste your precious thoughts. Every positive thought brings good into your life. Every negative thought pushes good away. It keeps it just out of your reach. How many times in your life have you almost gotten something good and it seemed to be just snatched away at the last moment? If you could remember your mental atmosphere at those times, you would have the answer. Too many negative thoughts create the barrier against positive affirmations. If you say, I don't want to be sick anymore, this is not an affirmation for good health. You have to state clearly what you do want. I accept perfect health now. I hate this car does not bring you a wonderful new car because you are not clear. And even if you do get a new car, in a short time you will probably hate it because this is what you've been affirming. If you want a new car, then say something like this. I have a beautiful new car that suits all my needs. Some people say life sucks, which is a terrible affirmation. Can you imagine what experiences that will bring you? But it isn't life that sucks. It's your thinking that sucks. That thought will help you to feel terrible. And when you feel terrible, no good can come into your life. Don't waste time arguing for your limitations, poor relationships, problems, illnesses, poverty, etc. The more you talk about the problem, the more you anchor it in place. Don't blame others for your problems. It's just another waste of time. We are all under the law of our own consciousness, our own thoughts, and only we attract specific experiences to us by the way we think. When you change your thinking process, then everything in your life will also change. You will be amazed and delighted to see how people, places, things, and circumstances can change. Blame is just another negative affirmation, and you do not want to waste your precious thoughts on it. Instead, learn to turn your negative affirmations around into positive ones. For instance, I hate my body becomes I love and appreciate my body. I never have enough money, or money flows into my life in an abundant way. I'm tired of being sick, or I allow my body to return to its natural vibrant health. I'm too fat, or I honor my body and take good care of it. Nobody loves me. I radiate love, and love fills my life. I'm not creative. To I'm discovering talents I did not know I had. I'm stuck in a lousy job, can become wonderful new doors are opening for me all the time. I'm not good enough. Or I'm in the process of positive changes, and I deserve the best. This does not mean for you to be frightened of every thought you think. Because when you first begin to make the changeover 
and really pay attention to your thoughts, you will be horrified to realize how negative much of your thinking has been. So when you catch a negative thought, just think to yourself, this is an old thought, I no longer choose to think that way. Then find a positive thought to substitute for it as quickly as you can. Remember, you want to feel good as much as possible. Thoughts of bitterness, resentment, blame, and guilt make you feel miserable. And that is a habit you really want to release. Affirmations are solutions that will replace whatever problem you might have. Whenever you have a problem, repeat over and over, All is well. Everything is working out for my highest good. Out of this situation, only good will come, and I am safe. This simple affirmation will work miracles in your life. I would also like to suggest that you do not share your affirmations with others who may poo-poo these ideas. When you are just getting started, it is best to keep your thinking to yourself until you have achieved your desired results. Then friends will say, Oh, your life is changing so much. You're so different. What have you been doing? And then you can explain. Go over this section several times until you really get the principles and can live them. Also zero in on the sections that may have the most meaning to you and practice the affirmations. And remember to make up affirmations of your own. The first affirmations for you to use right now are, I can do it. I can feel good about myself. I can make positive changes in my life. Let's talk about health. If you want to create better health in your body, there are definitely some things you must not do. You must not get angry at your body for any reason. Anger is another affirmation, and it is telling your body that you hate it or hate parts of it. Your cells are very aware of every thought you have. Think of your body as a servant that is working as hard as it can to keep you in perfect health no matter how you treat it. Your body knows how to heal itself. If you feed it healthy foods and beverages and give it exercise and sufficient sleep and think happy thoughts, then its work is easy. The cells are working in a happy, healthy atmosphere. However, if you feed it junk foods and drink lots of diet soda, be a couch potato and skimp on sleep and are grouchy and complaining all the time, Then the cells in your body are working at a disadvantage and in a disagreeable atmosphere. Then it's no wonder that your body is not as healthy as you would like it to be. You will never create good health by talking or thinking about your illness. Good health comes from love and appreciation. You want to put as much love into your body as you possibly can. Talk to it in loving ways. Touch and stroke it in loving ways. If there is a part of your body that is ailing or diseased, then you want to treat it as you would a sick little child. Tell it how much you love it and that you are doing everything you can to help it get well quickly. If you are sick, then you want to do more than just go to the doctor and have him give you a chemical to take care of the symptom. Your body is telling you that something you are doing is not good for your body. You need to learn more about health. The more you learn, the easier it is to take care of your body. You do not want to choose to feel like a victim. That just gives your power away. You could go to a health food store and pick up one of the many good books that teach you how to keep yourself healthy. You could see a nutritionist and have a healthy diet created just for you. Or you could see a holistic health practitioner. Do create a healthy, happy mental atmosphere. Be a willing participant in your own health plan. I believe we create every so-called illness in our body. The body, like everything else in life, is a mirror of our inner thoughts and beliefs. The body is always talking to us if we will only take the time to listen. Every cell within your body responds to every single thought you think and every word you speak. Continuous modes of thinking and speaking produce body behaviors and postures and eases or diseases. 
The person who has a permanently scowling face did not produce that by having joyous, loving thoughts. Older people's faces and bodies show so clearly a lifetime of thinking patterns. How will you look when you are elderly? Learn to accept that your life is not a series of random events, but a pathway of awakening. If every day is an awakening, you will never grow old. You will just keep growing. Imagine the day you turn 49 as the infancy of another life. A woman today who reaches the age 50 and remains free of cancer and heart disease can expect to see her 92nd birthday. You and only you have the ability to customize your own life cycle. So change your thinking now and get going. You are here for a very important reason and all you need is available to you. You can create thoughts that create a mental atmosphere that contributes to illness, or you can choose to think thoughts that create a healthy atmosphere both within you and around you. Positive Affirmations for Health I enjoy the foods that are best for my body. I love every cell of my body. I make healthy choices. I have respect for myself. I look forward to a healthy old age because I take loving care of my body now. I am constantly discovering new ways to improve my health. I return my body to optimum health by giving it what it needs on every level. Healing happens. I get my mind out of the way and allow the intelligence of my body to do its healing work naturally. I have a special guardian angel. I am divinely guided and protected at all times. Perfect health is my divine right and I claim it now. I am grateful for my healthy body. I love life. I am the only person who has control over my eating habits. I can always resist something if I choose to. Water is my favorite beverage. I drink lots of water to cleanse my body and mind. Filling my mind with pleasant thoughts is the quickest road to health. Let's talk about forgiveness. You can never be free of bitterness as long as you continue to think unforgiving thoughts. How can you be happy in this moment if you continue to choose to think angry and resentful thoughts? Thoughts of bitterness cannot create joy. No matter how justified you feel you are, no matter what they did, if you insist on holding on to the past, then you will never be free. Forgiveness of yourself and of others will release you from the prison of the past. When you feel that you are stuck in some situation, or when your affirmations are not working, it usually means there is some more forgiving to be done. When you do not flow freely with life in the present moment, it usually means you are holding on to a past moment. It can be regret, sadness, hurt, fear, or guilt, blame, anger, resentment, and sometimes a desire for revenge. Each one of these states comes from a space of unforgiveness, a refusal to let go and to come into the present moment. Only in the present moment can you create your future. If you are holding on to the past, you cannot be in the present. It is only in this now moment that your thoughts and words are powerful. So you really don't want to waste your current thoughts to continue to create your future from the garbage of the past. When you blame another, you give your own power away because you are placing the responsibility for your feelings on someone else. People in our lives may behave in ways that trigger uncomfortable responses in us. 
However, they did not get into our minds and create the buttons that have been pushed. Taking responsibility for our own feelings and reactions is mastering our ability to respond. In other words, we learn to consciously choose rather than simply react. Forgiveness is a tricky and confusing concept for many people. There is a difference between forgiveness and acceptance. Forgiving someone does not mean that you condone their behavior. And the act of forgiveness takes place in your own mind. It really has nothing to do with the other person. The reality of true forgiveness lies in setting ourselves free from holding on to the pain. It is simply an act of releasing yourself from the negative energy. Also, forgiveness does not mean allowing the painful behaviors or actions of another to continue in your life. Sometimes forgiveness means letting go. You forgive them and release them. Taking a stand and setting healthy boundaries is often the most loving thing you can do, not only for yourself but for the other person as well. No matter what your reasons are for having bitter, unforgiving feelings, you can go beyond them. You can get off it. You can let it go. You only live in the now, and you can choose to think thoughts that make you feel good right now. You can choose to practice thinking thoughts that create a positive today and tomorrow. Know that you are creating thinking habits that will serve you well forever. Positive Affirmations for Achieving Forgiveness The door to my heart opens inwards. I move through forgiveness to love. As I change my thoughts, the world around me changes. The past is over, so it has no power now. The thoughts of this moment create my future. It is no fun being a victim. I refuse to be helpless anymore. I claim my own power. I give myself the gift of freedom from the past and move with joy into the now. There is no problem too big or too small that it cannot be solved with love. I am ready to be healed. I am willing to forgive and all is well. I know that old negative patterns no longer limit me. I let them go with ease. As I forgive myself, it becomes easier to forgive others. I forgive myself for not being perfect. I am living the very best way I know how. It is now safe for me to release all of my childhood traumas and move into love. I forgive everyone in my past for all perceived wrongs. I release them with love. All of the changes in life that lie before me are positive ones, and I am safe. You have a choice. You can choose to stay stuck and bitter, or you can do yourself a favor by willingly forgiving the past and let it go and then move on to create a joyous, fulfilling life. You have the freedom to make your life anything you want it to be because you have freedom of choice. Let's talk about prosperity or wealth, however you want to look at it. You can never create prosperity by talking or thinking about your lack of money. This is wasted thinking and cannot bring you abundance. Dwelling on lack only creates more lack. Poverty thinking brings more poverty, and gratitude thinking brings abundance. There are a few affirmations and attitudes that are guaranteed to keep prosperity beyond reach. Resenting other people for the amount of money they may have just puts up a wall between you and your own flow. 
open your consciousness to new ideas about money, and it will be yours. There is never enough money. Now, that is a terrible affirmation to use. Also the one, money goes out faster than it comes in. This is poverty thinking of the worst kind. The universe can only respond to what you believe about yourself and about life. Examine whatever negative thoughts you have about money and then decide to release them and let them go. They have not served you well in the past and will not serve you well in the future. You can buy an occasional lottery ticket for fun, but do not put a lot of attention into winning the lottery and think it will solve your problems. This is scarcity thinking or poverty thinking and cannot bring lasting good into your life. Winning the lottery seldom brings positive changes into anyone's life. In fact, within two years, most lottery winners have lost almost all their winnings, have nothing to show for it, and are often worse off financially than before. If you think that winning the lottery will solve all of your problems, you are greatly mistaken because it doesn't involve changing consciousness. In effect, you're saying to the universe, I don't deserve to have good in my life except by a fluke chance. If you would only change your consciousness, your thinking, to allow the abundance of the universe to flow through your experience, you could have all the things you think the lottery can bring you, and you'd be able to keep them because they would be yours by right of consciousness. Affirming, declaring, deserving, and allowing are the steps to demonstrating riches far greater than you could ever win in a lottery. Another thing that can keep you from prospering is being dishonest. Whatever you give out in life comes back to you, always. And if you take from life, then life will take from you. It is that simple. You may feel that you don't steal, but are you counting the paper clips and stamps you may take from the office? Or are you a person who steals time or robs others of respect or perhaps steals relationships? All these things count and are a way of saying to the universe, I don't really deserve the good in life. I have to sneak around and take it. So become aware of the beliefs that may be blocking the flow of money in your life, and then change those beliefs and begin to create new, abundant thinking. Even if no one else in your family has done this, you can open your mind to the concept of money flowing into your life. If we want to prosper, then we must use prosperity thinking. I have two prosperity affirmations I've used for many years, and they work well for me. They'll also work for you. One, my income is constantly increasing. And two, I prosper wherever I turn. I had very little money when I started using them, but consistent practice has made them come true for me. You know, for a long time, I've believed that business is a place where we bless and prosper each other. I've never understood the concept of cutthroat business, where you try to cheat and put one over on the other person. That doesn't sound like a joyous way to live. There is so much abundance in this world if we would but just share it. At Hay House, my publishing firm, we have always been honest, honorable, we live up to our word, we do our work well, and treat others with respect and generosity. When you live that way, it is impossible to keep the money away. The universe rewards you at every possible turn. Today, we have a fabulous reputation in the publishing world and so much business that we are turning it away. We do not want to grow so big that we lose the personal touch. Now, if I, an abused child who did not finish high school, can do it, so can you. Once a day, stand with your arms open wide and say with joy, I am open and receptive to all the good and abundance in the universe, and thank you, life. Life will hear you and respond.
Affirmations for wealth. If you want to bring in the bucks, then use these affirmations with feeling and meaning. I am a magnet for money. Prosperity of every kind is drawn to me. Wherever it is that I work, I am deeply appreciated and well compensated. I live in a loving, abundant, harmonious universe, and I am grateful. I am now willing to be open to the unlimited prosperity that exists everywhere. Life supplies all my needs in great abundance. I trust life. The law of attraction brings only good into my life. I move from poverty thinking to prosperity thinking, and my finances reflect this change. I express gratitude for all the good in my life. Each day brings wonderful new surprises. I pay my bills with love, and I rejoice as I write out each check. Abundance flows freely through me. I deserve the best, and I accept the best now. I release all resistance to money. And I now allow it to flow joyously into my life. My good comes from everywhere and everyone. Creativity. You can never express yourself creatively by talking or thinking about what a klutz you are. If you say I have no creativity. Then that is an affirmation that will be true for you for as long as you continue to use it. There is an innate creativity flowing in all of us, and if we let it out, it will surprise and delight us. We are all tapped into the creative flow of energy in the universe. Some of us express ourselves more creatively than others, but we all can do it. We all create our lives every day. Each of us has unique talents and abilities. Unfortunately, too many of us had well-meaning adults stifle that creativity when we were children. I had a teacher who told me I couldn't dance because I was too tall, and a friend was told he couldn't draw because he drew the wrong tree. It's all so silly, but we were obedient children and believed the messages. But now you can go beyond them. Another false assumption is that you must be an artist to be creative. That is one form of creativity, and there are so many more. You are creating every moment of your life, from the most common, ordinary creations of new cells in your body, from choosing your emotional responses to your present job, to your bank account, to your relationships with friends, and to your very attitudes about yourself, is all creativity. Also, you could be a really good bed maker. You could cook delicious food. You could do your job creatively. You could be creative in the garden, or you could be creative in the ways that you are kind to others. These are a few of the millions of ways of expressing yourself creatively. No matter how you choose to express yourself creatively, you want to have satisfaction and to be deeply fulfilled by all that you do. If you will allow it. You are divinely guided by spirit at all times. Know that spirit makes no mistakes. When there is a strong desire within you to express or create something, know that feeling is divine discontent. Our longing is our calling. No matter what it is, if we go with it, we will be guided, guarded, and assured of success. When a purpose or a path is laid before us. We have a choice to trust and go with it, or remain stuck in the fear. Trusting the perfection which resides within you is the key. I know it can be frightening. Everybody is afraid of something, but we can do it anyway. Remember, the universe loves you and wants you to succeed at everything you do. You are expressing yourself creatively every moment of the day. In fact, expressing yourself creatively is the only thing you do. You are being you in your own unique way all the time.
Knowing that, you can now release any mental beliefs that you are not creative and go for each and every project that comes to mind. And never think you're too old for anything. My own life did not begin to have meaning until I was in my mid-forties when I started teaching. At fifty, I began my publishing company on a very small scale. At fifty-five, I ventured into the world of computers, taking classes and overcoming the fear of them. At sixty, I had my first garden and have become an avid organic gardener who grows her own food. At seventy, I entered a children's art class. And also in my seventies, I totally changed my handwriting. I became inspired by Vimala Rogers, who wrote, Your Handwriting Can Change Your Life. At 75, I graduated to an adult's art class and have started to sell my paintings. My current art teacher wants me to get involved with sculpture next. And at the same time, I took up yoga, and my body is making positive changes. A few months ago, at 76, I decided to stretch myself in areas that scared me, and I took up ballroom dancing. Now I'm taking several classes a week, and I'm fulfilling my childhood dream of learning to dance. I love to learn things I have not experienced. Who knows what I'll do in the future? But I know I will be doing my affirmations and expressing new creativity until the day I leave the planet. So if there's a particular project you want to do, or if you just want to be more creative in general, then you can use some of these affirmations and use them joyously as you release your creativity in a million and one different projects. Positive Affirmations for Expressing Creativity I release all resistance to expressing my creativity fully. I am always in touch with my creative source. I feel good expressing myself in all sorts of creative ways. I am a clear thinker and I express myself with ease. I am learning to be more creative every day. My potential is unlimited. I am discovering talents I did not know I had. My innate creativity surprises and delights me. My talents are in demand, and my unique gifts are appreciated by those around me. I am a joyous, creative expression of life. Ideas come to me easily and effortlessly. Let's talk about relationships, romance. Personal relationships always seem to be the first priority for many of us. Perhaps you are always searching for love. Hunting for love doesn't always bring the right partner, because the reasons for wanting love are unclear. We think, oh, if I only had someone who loved me, my life would be so much better. But that's not the way it works. There is a big difference between the need for love and being needy for love. When you are needy for love, it simply means that you are missing love and approval from the most important person you know yourself. You may become involved in relationships that are codependent and ineffectual for both partners. You can never create love in your life by talking or thinking about being lonely. Feeling lonely and needy just pushes people away. You cannot heal a relationship in your life by talking or thinking about how awful it is now. This only puts the attention on the problem, not the solution. You want to turn your thoughts away from the problem and create new thoughts that will produce a solution. Arguing for your limitations is just resistance, and resistance is only a delay tactic. It's another way of saying, I'm not good enough to have what I'm asking for. The first relationship to improve is the one you have with yourself. 
When you are happy with yourself, then all your other relationships improve too. A happy person is very attractive to others. If you are looking for more love, then you need to love yourself more. This means no criticism, no complaining, no blaming, no whining, and no choosing to feel lonely. It means being very content with yourself in the present moment and choosing to think thoughts that make you feel good now. There is no one way to experience love, for we all experience love in different ways. For some of us to really experience love, we need to feel love through being hugged and touched. For others to really feel loved, we need to hear the words, I love you. For others, we need to see a demonstration of love, like a gift of flowers. Our preferred way of experiencing love is often the way we feel most comfortable demonstrating love. I suggest that you work on loving yourself nonstop. Demonstrate to yourself the growing love that you have for yourself. Treat yourself to romance and love. Show yourself how special you are. Pamper yourself. Buy yourself flowers. Surround yourself with colors, textures, and scents that please you. Life always mirrors back to us the feelings we have inside. As you grow in an inner sense of love and romance, the right person to share your growing sense of intimacy will be attracted to you like a magnet. If you want to go from loneliness thinking to fulfillment thinking, then you need to think in terms of creating a loving mental atmosphere within you and around you. Do let all those negative thoughts about love and romance just fade away and fill your mind with thoughts of love. Think of sharing love and approval and acceptance with everyone you meet. When you are able to contribute to the fulfillment of your own needs, then you will not be so needy, so codependent. It has to do with how much you love yourself. When you truly love who you are, you stay centered, calm, and secure and your relationships at home as well as at work are wonderful. You will find yourself reacting to various situations and people differently. Matters that once may have been desperately important won't be quite as important anymore. New people will enter your life, and perhaps some old one will disappear, which can be scary at first and also wonderful, refreshing, and exciting. Once you have all this clear in your mind and you know what you want in a relationship, you must go out and be with people. No one is going to suddenly appear at your doorstep. A good way to meet people is in a support group or a night class. It enables you to connect with people who are like-minded or who are involved in the same interests. It's amazing how quickly you can meet new friends. Be open and receptive and the universe will respond to you for your highest good. Think happy thoughts, and you will be a happy person, and everyone will want to be with you, and all your current relationships will improve. Positive Affirmations for Love I will allow these affirmations to fill my consciousness knowing they will become true for me and I will practice them often and with joy. From time to time I ask those I love, how can I love you more? I choose to see clearly with eyes of love. I love what I see. I draw love and romance into my life, and I accept it now. Love is around every corner, and joy fills my entire world. I rejoice in the love I encounter every day. I am comfortable looking in the mirror saying, I love you, I really, really love you. I now deserve love, romance, and joy and all the good that life has to offer me. I am surrounded by love, all is well. 
I am in a joyous, intimate relationship with a person who truly loves me. I am beautiful and everybody loves me. I am greeted by love wherever I go. I attract only healthy relationships. I am always treated well. I am very thankful for all the love in my life. I find it everywhere. Let's talk about job success. This is a big problem for many people. However, you can always have a successful job if you will change your thinking about work. You will never find working a pleasure if you hate your job or you can't stand your boss. What a terrible affirmation that is. It will be impossible for you to ever attract a great job with that belief system. If you want to enjoy your time at work, then you must change your thinking. I'm a great believer in blessing with love every person, place, and thing at the workplace. Begin with your current job. Affirm that this job is merely a stepping stone to far greater positions. You are in your current job because of the things you believed in the past. You drew it to you by your thinking. Perhaps you learned your attitude towards work from your parents. No matter, you can change your thinking now. So bless with love your boss, your co-workers, the location, the building, the stairs or elevators, the rooms, the furniture, and each and every customer. This creates a loving mental atmosphere within you, and the whole office will respond to it. I have never understood the reasoning behind putting down or berating others at work. If you are an owner, a manager, or a supervisor, how can you possibly expect to get the best work from others if they are frightened or resentful? We all want to be appreciated, acknowledged, and encouraged. If you support your employees and give them respect, then they will give you the best work they can. Now, please don't believe that it is hard to get a job. That may be true for many, but it does not have to be true for you. You only need one job, and your consciousness will open the pathway for you. Don't have faith in fear. When you hear of negative trends in business or in the economy, immediately affirm, That may be true for some, but it is not true for me. I always prosper no matter where I am or what is going on. People often ask me for the affirmations to make their relationships at work be smoother. In fact, for many people, this is a really big issue in their lives. I am deeply aware that whatever I give out comes back to me multiplied, and this is true everywhere, including at work. In the workplace, it is important to know that every employee and employer has been attracted by the action of love, for it's his and her divine right place here and now at this point in time and space. Divine harmony permeates us all, and we can all flow together in the workplace in a most productive and joyous way. There aren't any problems that don't have solutions. There aren't any questions without answers. Choose to go beyond the problem to seek the divine right action solution to any discord that may seem to appear. Be willing to learn from any discord or confusion as it comes up. It's important to release all blame and turn within to seek the truth. And be willing to release whatever pattern may be in your consciousness that has contributed to the situation. Know that you are successful in all that you do. You're inspired and productive. You serve others willingly and gladly. Divine harmony reigns supreme within and around you and within and around each and every person in your workplace. When you know and declare that it's possible to successfully operate in the workplace according to divine principles, then divine love brings to you those who can be helped by that which you so lovingly do. Now, if you like your job but feel you're not getting paid enough, then bless your current salary with love. 
Expressing gratitude for what you do have enables it to grow, and absolutely no more bitching about the job or coworkers. Your consciousness put you where you are now. Your changing consciousness can lift you to a better position. You can do it. During your workday, there are a number of things you can do to release tension. Here are a few ideas. 1. Before you go to work every day, do this simple exercise. Just sit comfortably and concentrate on your breath. Whenever you notice thoughts coming in, gently bring your awareness back to your breath. Give yourself at least 10 or 15 minutes to dwell in the silence each day. There is nothing difficult or tricky to this, and it's worth taking the time. 2. Write or type this affirmation and put it where you can see it at work. My job is a peaceful haven. I bless my job with love. I put love in every corner, and my job lovingly responds with warmth and comfort. I am at peace. When you start to think about your boss, say this affirmation to yourself. I only give out that which I wish to receive. My love and acceptance of others is mirrored to me in every way. Refuse to be limited in any way by human mind thinking. Your life can be filled with love and joy because your work is a divine idea. Remember to say to yourself every day before going to work, No matter where I am, there is only infinite good, infinite wisdom, infinite harmony, and love. Positive Affirmations for Job Success The joy I find in my career is reflected in my overall happiness. At my job, my co-workers and I encourage each other's growth and success. The perfect job is looking for me, and we are being brought together now. I truly believe that we are here to bless and prosper each other. I reflect this belief in my daily interactions. When it is time for a new job, the perfect position presents itself easily. Opportunities are everywhere. I have unlimited choices. Working together is part of the purpose of life. I love the people I work with. I deserve to have a successful career and I accept it now. Everyone I encounter at work today has my best interests at heart. I am very good at giving encouragement and positive feedback to others. I have unlimited potential. Only good lies before me. My workspace is a pleasure to be in. There is mutual respect among my co-workers. Let's talk about stress and being stress-free. This is the moment in which you are either enjoying or not enjoying your life. What you are thinking now is creating the way you feel in your body now and your experiences tomorrow. If you are stressing yourself out over every little thing and making mountains out of molehills, you will never find inner peace. We talk a lot about stress these days. Everyone seems to be stressed out by something. Stress seems to be a buzzword, and we use it to the point where I think it's a cop-out. I'm so stressed, or this is so stressful, all this stress, stress, stress. I think that stress is a fearful reaction to life's constant changes. It is an excuse we often use for not taking responsibility for our own feelings. If we can put the blame out there on someone or something, then we can just play the innocent victim. But being the victim doesn't make us feel good, and it doesn't change the situation. Often we are stressing ourselves because we have our priorities mixed up. So many of us feel that money is the most important thing in our lives, but this is not true. 
there is something far more important and precious to us without which we could not live. What is that? It's our breath. Our breath is the most precious substance in our lives, and yet we totally take for granted when we exhale that our next breath will be there. If we did not take another breath, we would not last three minutes. Now, if the power that created us has given us enough breath to last as long as we shall live, can we not trust life that everything else we need will also be supplied? When we trust life to take care of us and all our little problems, then stress just melts away. You do not have time to waste on negative thinking or emotions because that only creates more of what you say you don't want. If you are doing some positive affirmations and you are not getting the results you want, then check to see how often during the day you allow yourself to feel bad, to be upset. These emotions are probably exactly what is frustrating you and delaying the manifestation of your affirmations and stopping the flow of your good. The next time you realize how stressed you are, ask yourself, what is scaring you? Stress is just fear. It's that simple. You do not need to be afraid of life or afraid of your own emotions. Find out what you are doing to yourself that is creating this fear within you. Your inner goal is joy and harmony and peace. Harmony is being at peace with yourself. It is not possible to have stress and inner harmony at the same time. When you are at peace... You do one thing at a time, and you don't let things get to you. When you feel stressed, do something to release the fear. Breathe deeply or go for a brisk walk. Remind yourself that I am the only power in my world, and I create a peaceful, loving, joyful, fulfilling life. You want to move through life feeling safe. Don't give a little word like stress a lot of power. Don't use it as an excuse to create tension in your body. Nothing, no person, place, or thing has any power over you. You are the only thinker in your mind, and it is your thoughts that create your life. So train yourself to think thoughts that make you feel good. That way, you will always be creating your life out of joy and in joy. Joy always brings more to be joyous about. Affirmations for a Stress-Free Life I let go of all fear and doubt, and life becomes simple and easy for me. I create a stress-free world for myself. I relax all my neck muscles and I let go of any tension in my shoulders. I slowly breathe in and out and I find myself relaxing more and more with each breath. I am a capable person and I can handle anything that comes my way. I am centered and focused. I feel more secure each day. I am safe when I express my feelings. I can be serene in any situation. I am comfortable with my finances. I am always able to pay my bills on time. I trust myself to deal with any problems that arise during the day. I realize that stress is only fear. I now release all fears. I am in the process of making positive changes in all areas of my life. And now we come to self-esteem. You will never have good self-esteem if you refuse to think well about yourself. Self-esteem is merely feeling good about yourself 
And when you feel good about yourself, you develop confidence. Confidence then builds self-esteem. Each one feeds the other. Once you get the rhythm going, you can accomplish almost anything. Self-esteem is just that, what you think about yourself. You have the freedom to think anything you want. Why would you ever want to belittle yourself? You were born extremely confident. You came into this world knowing how wonderful you are. You were so perfect when you were a tiny baby. You did not have to do anything. You were already perfect, and you acted as if you knew it. You knew you were the center of the universe, and you were not afraid to ask for what you wanted. You freely expressed your emotions. Your mother knew when you were angry. In fact, the whole neighborhood knew it. And when you were happy, your smile lit up the whole room. You were so full of love and confidence. Tiny babies will die if they don't get love. But once we are older, we can learn to live without love. But no baby will stand for that. Little babies love every inch of their bodies, even their own feces. They have no guilt, no shame, no comparison. They know they are unique and wonderful. You were like that. Then somewhere during your childhood, well-meaning parents passed on their own insecure feelings and taught you feelings of inadequacy and fear. At that point, you began to deny your own magnificence. These thoughts and feelings never were true and certainly are not true now. I want to bring you back to the time when you really knew how to love yourself. Mirror work is simple and very powerful. Mirror work simply means looking into a mirror when you say your affirmations. Mirrors reflect our true feelings back to us. As children, we received most of our negative messages from adults, many of them looking us straight in the eye and perhaps even shaking a finger at us. Most of us today, when we look into a mirror, will say something negative to ourselves. We either criticize our looks or berate ourselves for something. To look yourself in the eye and make a positive declaration about yourself is one of the quickest ways to get positive results with affirmations. I ask people to look in their eyes and say something positive about themselves every time they pass a mirror. And if something unpleasant happens to you during the day, immediately go to the mirror and say, I love you anyway. You see, events come and go, but the love you have for yourself can be constant, and it is the most important quality you possess in your life. And if something wonderful happens, go to the mirror and say, Thank you. Acknowledge yourself for creating this wonderful experience. First thing in the morning and last thing in the evening, I want you to look into your eyes and say, I love you. I really love you, and I accept you exactly as you are. It can be tough at first, but if you stick with it, in a short time this affirmation will be true for you, and won't that be fun? You will find that as your self-love grows, so will your self-respect, and any changes that you find yourself needing to make will be easier to accomplish when you know that they are the right ones for you. Love is never outside yourself. It is always within you. As you are more loving, you will be more lovable. So choose new thoughts to think about yourself and choose new words to tell yourself how magnificent you are and that you deserve all the good that life has to offer. I am totally adequate for all situations. I choose to feel good about myself. I am worthy of my own love. I stand on my own two feet. I accept and use my own power. It is safe for me to speak up for myself. 
I am loved and accepted exactly as I am right here and right now. My self-esteem is high because I honor who I am. My life gets more fabulous every day. I look forward to what each new hour brings. I am neither too little nor too much, and I do not have to prove myself to anyone. Life supports me in every possible way. My consciousness is filled with healthy, positive, loving thoughts that reflect themselves in my experience. The greatest gift I can give myself is unconditional love. I love myself exactly as I am. I no longer wait to be perfect in order to love myself. And in conclusion, once you have done your affirmations, then it is time to release them and let them go. You have decided what you want. You have affirmed them in both thought and word. Now you must release them to the universe so that the laws of life can bring them to you. If you worry and fret about how your affirmations will come true, you are just delaying the whole process. It is not your job to figure out how to bring your affirmation to fruition. The way the laws of attraction work is that you declare that you have something and then the universe brings it to you. The universe is far more clever than you are and knows everything in every possible way to make your affirmations come true. The only reason for delay and for seemingly denying you is that there is a part of you that does not believe that you deserve it. Or perhaps your negative beliefs are so strong that they overcome your affirmations. If you are declaring, my income is increasing, and it isn't, then perhaps you have old, deep-seated beliefs that you don't deserve to prosper. Or your family may have strong negative beliefs about money, and there's a part of you that still accepts those beliefs. As little children, we are so obedient that we willingly accept our parents' beliefs about life and continue to operate under them for the rest of our lives until we choose to really look at those beliefs and examine them. Your mother or father may have constantly said, Oh, money is hard to come by. Now, without even knowing it, you may still have that belief in your own consciousness. If you believe that, then the universe cannot bring you the increasing income until you release that belief. I often ask people to look at what the family beliefs were about various subjects. If prosperity is your issue, then take a large sheet of paper and write down all the things your family said about money when you were a child. If you find any negative statements, and remember these were all affirmations for them, then your job is to turn those negative beliefs into positive affirmations. Free yourself from the tyranny of your parents' negative affirmations, and you will open yourself to the abundant flow of good in every area of your life. Please, don't be discouraged by any setbacks. You are learning a new process. As you become proficient at it, your life will become easier and easier. Hello, this is Louise Hay, and I am delighted to share my ideas on affirmations with you. Do listen to the CD for at least 30 days. If you drive a car, it is a perfect companion on the road. Let these ideas permeate your consciousness until they become a part of you. I dedicate this CD to my ever-growing audience. It is my desire that each and every person learn how to use affirmations to create love, peace, joy, prosperity, and a sense of well-being for themselves. 
Today is a new day. Today is a day for you to begin creating a joyous, fulfilling life.